everybody. Looks like there's starting out with a bang all over the world here today. We got hello from Oregon, Michigan, Missouri, Kathmandu, Ireland, Kentucky, San Diego, North Carolina, India, Isle of Skye. This is awesome. Uh, so, welcome. If you haven't been here before, my name is Baron Collins Hill. Uh, I teach mandolin through the website mandolessons.com. I got tons of free information. It's all up there. It's all free. It's kind of donate if you want sort of deal. Um, and every Saturday at noon, I host one of these. This is a hour long kind of live chat. And all right, Quebec, just keeping up with the chat here. Um, keep a live thing going every Saturday at noon Eastern Standard Time. You guys can ask questions, um, request tunes, and I'll play them if I know them. I try to avoid um, copyrighted stuff just so I don't get shut down by YouTube, so I try my best to do that. I love to hear what you're all working on, um, what interests you musically. Uh, I see familiar faces already and some new faces, so thank you all so much for joining in today. I hope it's sounding and coming through clear and everything's all lined up. Uh, it's been having pretty good luck lately but uh let me know if anything goes awry and i'll do my best to to get it fixed the first couple tunes that i played there the first tune is called wood choppers breakdown or wood choppers reel i can't quite remember what it's called it's on my website wood choppers something or other um i think there's a couple different names the second tune was uh i believe it was joys of quebec um yeah so that's what i've been playing there's a couple tunes that popped into my head uh, i'm just gonna catch up with the chat here cool um cool uh stuka says you should play wayfaring stranger sometime i'm happy to do that it might be a little bit out of my fingers but i'll see what i can do um michael says trying to learn the cajun style you played the other day cool so yeah that's um it's called i think i think what you're thinking of there michael is i uh i directed you to that video on cross tuning is where it, that tuning down a whole step is also called cajun tuning because that's what a lot of cajun players are playing in but it was all irish tunes um but yeah it's nice to uh so i posted a video on facebook and you can find it on youtube as well but check out my facebook page on for mando lessons um, posted a couple of tunes where I tuned my mandolin down. I tuned my G strings down to F and my D strings down to C and my A strings down to G and my E strings down to D. So it all plays just like a regular mandolin, but it comes through a little deeper sounding, a really nice sound. I had, uh, that evening I went to a, a friend's house and in, sometimes in Irish music will come across, they're called C sessions or B sessions or whatever the key is. Um, where maybe there's a piper or a whistle player that has a an instrument that will play only in the key of C and sort of the related. So rather than D, it's like having a, a penny whistle. If you have a penny whistle that's in D, you can play in D and G and some amount of A. And if you have it in C, it's a little bit bigger. Your sort of regular scale comes out in C. And so I, I went to a friend's house and played a bunch of tunes with a, a whistle player that, that plays, uh, that has a nice, beautiful sounding C whistle. So that was sort of the impetus for the, the tuning down. Um, so try it sometime. Tune, tune your strings down. There's that lesson on my website. Um, it's called I think it's called cross tuning or alternate tuning. Um, you can look it up for the mandolin. I go through a bunch of different ones. But the one, it's about the 12-minute mark. I talk about the Cajun tuning, which is also the same as tuning down for an Irish C session or something like that. All right, I'm going to catch up with the chat again. You guys are really... Wow, this is, might be a record for today. I got over 50 people already. All right. Um, cool. Uh, I can never remember how to pronounce your name. Osin, I believe, says, I want to move... been playing traditional mandolin for years, but want to move into classical mandolin. Any tips? Um, I know that... Uh, Katarina Lichtenberg, I believe is her name, um, through Artist Works. Um, it's uh, a website that they've got a lot of mandolin. I don't know anything about playing classical mandolin. Um, there's she does a whole classical mandolin um, 
I think it's through Artist Works. It could be through Peghead Nation. I can't remember. One of the two. Um, there's a, a sort of a subscription service you can sign up for and learn classical mandolin. It looks great. Um, I don't personally know anything about classical. Maybe uh, people here in the chat will be able to steer you in the right direction for some great classical music. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, catching up with that chat again. Uh, oh, I left out Wisconsin. All right, Wisconsin is here as well. As sure as a bunch of other places now too. Uh, cool. Uh, April is learning Fox Hunter's Slip Jig. Great tune. Uh, Glasgow, Kentucky. I didn't know there was a Glasgow, Kentucky. Um, cool. Uh, New York. Washington. Uh, Hector the Hero. That's a great tune. I can't remember how that goes. Um, Saddle the Pony. Another great tune. Could you talk about... Pl Oops. Um, the chat just jumped down on me. Uh, could you talk more... This is from Little Muddy Farm. Could you talk more about playing with guitar players and guitar backing tracks? Yeah, so uh, you might have got that. The most recent lesson, I think, that I put out uh, is, is a lesson for people who don't play guitar but play mandolin. A really great skill to have on the mandolin is to just be able to look at a guitar player and sort of see the shapes they're making with their hand, and that can tell you what key they're playing in, which can be really a really helpful thing. Um, so, you know, I think, I think the biggest thing in terms of playing with other people is spend a lot of time listening to the kind of music you want to make. So if you want to play bluegrass, listen to tons of bluegrass, and just sort of listen to how the role of the mandolin, or what the role of the mandolin is in bluegrass. Um, you know, in bluegrass, you'll often get like the the guitars going, and the bass is going boom, 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 and the mandolin is on the offbeat when the bass isn't happening. Boom, 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 boom. So the mandolin has that really sort of percussive role in bluegrass, whereas in maybe a kind of more f general folk duo or um, kind of singer songwritery stuff, you can get kind of more guitar strummy patterns on the mandolin. But I really think um, listening to um, whatever kind of music you want to play will just automatically get the sound of the mandolin in your ears and give you a lot to work with right from there. And there's three, there's two more track uh, lessons on sort of following guitar players that can help. I talk about like listening for bass lines and kind of how guitar players use capos. So those are coming out in the coming weeks. If you haven't subscribed, uh, do so, and you'll you'll see them when they come up. All right, thank you, Ryan. I just get, I had a two dollars super chat. Thank you. Um, oh boy. Okay, play either Saddle the Pony or King of the Fairies. Oh, I'm not very good at either of those tunes. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, I can if I can remember how. Let me figure out how King of the Fairies goes, and I will play it for you here. Um, that's, that's one that I don't play particularly well. It's a great tune, great Irish set dance. Um, it's got lots of parts, but let's see if I can pull this off here. Um, and then just do a quick little catch up on the chat. Uh, Or, okay, so maybe I'll, maybe I'll play, Ryan says, or Wayfaring Stranger. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> that gets me out of a pick. I'll play Wayfaring Stranger. Um, I think I taught it in E minor. Um, but there's a great version. If you haven't heard it, check out uh, David Grisman and Sam Bush. I believe the album's called Hold On, I'm Strummin'. And they do a beautiful version. Uh... I think I can do this. It's got this high up part that I'll try to get here. But great, great tune. I teach an E minor on my website, but I'll try to do this Sam and Dave G minor version.
too high for me to sing i've never tried to sing it in g minor but i uh, i really recommend if you haven't heard the sam bush and david grisman version of that it's so beautiful just double mandolins there might be a guitar in there but i can't remember i think it's just mandolin all right well thank you for allowing me to do that ryan all right let's see if i can catch up with the super chat here um trying to move on Okay, so there are lots of questions about Wayfaring Stranger. Uh, Pecos Nick says, do you have any suggestions for a solo during a break as opposed to the usual melody? Yeah, I mean, I think... So I'll, I'll go to E minor. Um, you know, I think it's, it's sort of this E minor... It's, it's cool. You can play around with some nice kind of notes that you might not expect that are kind of outside of that that sound. So. You can hit this. Um, if you're in E minor, you can hit a C sharp, which is kind of a, it's not outside the key, but it's sort of a, a wacky note within it. It is outside the key. I don't remember. I, don't, I just think the melody never actually comes to either a C natural or a C sharp, so it's a little ambiguous. So kind of hitting that C sharp and that E flat, sort of like the note uh, half step below where the melody is, is a cool sound. Um, I think, you know, what I do to get ideas for songs, for uh, solos, is one, start with the melody. It's a great place to go. But, of course, you know, moving away from the melody is a great um, thing to do as well. Listen to a bunch of versions. Also, li um, I have a lesson on my website somewhere that, uh, let's see if I can find it here, that I talk about singing and playing the mandolin at the same time. Um, and I think what that can be helpful for is often people have a easier time kind of going do 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 do. Oh, I get with the right key. Like our voice, our voices, because we talk and we communicate with them every day, are really good at kind of making stuff up. You know, we just imp we're just improvising constantly all day, kind of creating sentences and and stories and things um so if you can if you're finding that with your voice you can sort of make something up let's see if you can just match that with with your uh mandolin
etc. So if your voice can come up with something, then see if you can play what your voice thinks. Um, Gary says, what do you think of shifting from mandolin to old time banjo? What knowledge or music muscle memory do you bring from one to another? So I actually play old time banjo. I play claw hammer. I'm working on two finger, but it's hard. <laughs> it's unfamiliar. I should say, um, it's, I haven't put as much work into it as I'd like, but I do play claw hammer. Um, I'll get a banjo here real quick. I think one thing that's nice about, this is a little uncommon because this is a gourd banjo. Um, but one nice thing is if you're in double C tuning, capo to D, so it's like, it's, it, this is, is what the set tuning sounds like. Ooh, that's... So these three strings, the lowest, are the same as a mandolin. This actually isn't because it's tuned low, but there's actually a lot of sort of, sorry, it's these strings. It would be D, A, and then skipping the second string, and the first string is E. So you have, which is the same as a mandolin, but not this instrument because it's tuned funny. Um, so there, in terms of the fretboard, there's a lot of similarities. Most of the difference comes from your right hand and sort of that, that style. But I think it's totally gettable. There's a great guy, uh, I think it's clawhammer.net. This guy, Josh Turknet, has some videos on YouTube. That's kind of where I le you learned from. Um, I'll play a little banjo tune. Let me see here if I can get... similarities you know i think any second instrument you know once you have one there's so many skills just coming from like timing and like developing your ear that are um that transfer over right to another instrument and the only thing to learn on a new instrument is anything that's different so you know if you're playing guitar it's pretty much all the same you have a different tuning to deal with but um but you know you're still fretting with your left hand and picking with your right hand so there's a lot of crossover skills with banjo left hand's doing the same thing so you have a new right hand technique to work on but there's still a lot of crossover and you've got all those tunes and all that kind of ear training from the mandolin so i highly recommend it new instruments are super fun um just started taking face-to-face -face lessons because i've started struggling with some things my teacher was having me work on old joe clark cool that's a great tune there's a lot you can do with it um is your Gibson radius, and if not, do you notice a big difference between playing that and your Ellis? So I have a, um, a old Gibson oval hole mandolin from the 20s. Um, those, I don't believe, are radius. I think they're just flat. I, I don't find a big difference, so I don't really notice whether th something's radius or not. Um, I'm pretty sure it's flat. I'm pretty sure the Gibson's flat and the Ellis is... This is radius, I know. Um... And we're talking about the fingerboard here, kind of having a little arch to it, um, which a lot of more modern instruments have, um, but not all. Some people have really strong preferences one way or the other. I don't personally um, find that much of a difference, but I totally understand that like some people's hands just fit, fit radius or flat fingerboards better. Um, hope that's helpful. Um, I'll kind of, I just sort of try not to think about it too much and don't, don't tend to notice as much. I think it just sort of takes, it takes a little bit of getting used to it. Like, okay, this is a different instrument. Even if it was, you know, a different Ellis A style mandolin with the same radius and everything, they're going to play somewhat similar, but they're going to be a little bit different. Um, every instrument sort of requires you to learn what it wants and how to make it sound its best. Um, let's see here.
Cool. Yellow Rose Farm, also from Maine. Uh, glad, glad you're joining us. Good to have you back. Um, what is the name of the book for Bach on mandolin? I don't know, but there. I think if you Google Bach mandolin, this is for more classical mandolin stuff. There's, some, there, I know there's some out there. Um, okay, great. And then I'm just slow and catching up with the chat. Uh, Jamie's got you covered on that one. Um, Bluegrass Album Band is a great one to listen to. Those guys are my favorite. Yeah, there's like five or six CDs, I think. Bluegrass Album Band, it's Tony Rice, Doyle Lawson, Jerry Douglas. Um, uh, Bobby Hicks is at least on some of them. Um, great, great lineup. Classic people just playing. They're kind of more modern players, a lot of them, like Jerry and Tony, um, playing some really kind of straight ahead bluegrass. Really amazing stuff. Great to listen to. Um, let's see. All right, let's see. Uh, Little Muddy Farm says, enjoy the duo Mandolin Orange. Me too. I didn't know much about them, but people kept telling me to listen to them. They're great. They're really kind of nice, modern folk singer-songwriter folks that are making sound great. Awesome players, awesome singers, great songwriters. It's all good. Um, okay, let's see. Got to catch up with the chat. I love it. Um, snowing in Iowa, watching the shape of the guitar player's hands records the great way. Looking at your hands. Yeah. Well, sounds like you got the snow this week. It was snowing here last week, but now it's like, I think it's above freezing and starting to thaw a little, which is nice. Um, uh, Ryan asks, do you know When in Rome by Nickel Creek? I think I used to know the the sort of like the little mando, mandolin intro line, but I it's been years since I've thought about that tune, but it's a great song. Um, James says, nice to hear a minor key once in a while. I agree. Minor tunes are great. Um So, uh, Little Muddy Farm says when playing 1-4-5, would the minor chord to use be a 6 chord um, for a solo? Uh, so, I think if, if the tune itself is just straight minor, you can just make all of your 1-4 and 5s, or you make your 1 and 4 chords. So, in Wayfaring Stranger, um, it's not G major, C major, and D major. It becomes G minor, so it's your 1 chord minor. C minor is your four chord minor, and then your D, you can you could use a D major, or you could use a D dominant seven with a C natural in it. So just thinking, I'm still sort of thinking one, four, and five. It's just my one and four are minor, and my five is either major or dominant. Cheyenne says, can you talk about how to play more impressive when playing solo? I usually play solo and I'm trying to impress my crowd considering the volume on the mandolin. Um, let's see here. Good question. Um, I mean, I think one of the things that I do, you know, when I'm sitting around doing this sort of thing, when it's either, you know, playing on the internet or in front of people and it's just kind of like just me on the mandolin um i think one thing is just get really comfortable with your double stops it's a huge difference between going even if that's super clean if you can get to the point where double stops just come really second nature um and you, it, it becomes so much more sound coming out of the instrument as soon as you get i mean there's it's beautiful to have just a simple single line melody no no harmony to it it's a beautiful thing and that's what happens a lot in irish music and i love to hear it but also um you know as soon as you expand from like a single melody note and branch out into two two string chords or three string chords or four string chords then it really just kind of the whole piece can kind of bloom in a nice way 
Um, and I think the way to do that is just, you know, when you're practicing, just put aside some time in your practice schedule to just work on taking a tune you know really well in G or D probably are good places to start and just see how big you can get that to sound. You'll hit notes that don't sound great, but as long as you're kind of keeping your ear open and listening to your own playing, you'll you'll get to the point where you say, okay, that's not quite the note I wanted. I got to take a string out or put a finger down somewhere else to kind of fill out the sound and just do that a lot and sort of see how big you can make a, a, a tune sound. And it might be bigger than you want it to. You know, I could do like... And it sort of starts to swallow up the melody in a way that I'm not really wild about. But practicing that and kind of playing too big makes it easier to kind of dial that back a little bit and find a nice midi uh, middle ground. Um, I hope that's helpful. Catching up with the chat again. Um, <laughs> James says, is that an electric guitar? I see. Good eye. Yes, this is a Telecaster. Um, I mostly actually, I just got this. If you look at the action, it's really high because I got this little nut extender. I really want to learn to play pedal steel guitar, but I don't have a pedal steel guitar. So I've been, I've got this nut extender and some finger picks and a slide. And I've been working on just open tuning kind of wax steel stuff until I get a pedal steel and really jump off the deep end. Um, yeah, I, I played a little bit of electric guitar, mostly just for fun. I really like, kind of, I love the sound of the Telecaster, so it's, it's kind of a little indulgence of my own. I don't, I'm not very good at it, but it's fun to, whatever you hit just kind of sounds good and electric, which is nice. Um, <coughs> Michael says, when do playing chords ever get easy? Just work through some chord progressions and what a workout. Yeah, um, I know the feeling. You know, I, like, year, like probably quite a ways into playing, I was still struggling with, you know, like playing chord progressions. What my, my recommendation is, when it comes to playing chords, find somebody or something to play along with. Um, you know, whether it's my play along tracks, make it so it just plays the melody or the melody in the chords. Um, and, uh, work on just playing with some, something or somebody else because it's so much more fun, you know, just to sit there and do this. It doesn't allow you to sort of get like lost in the moment and really kind of dig into it. And that's, that's the feeling you're really going for because that's going to make you kind of forget about time. And pretty soon it's two hours later and you've been just like having a blast playing tunes. So if you can go... You know, if you've got a G, C, D, A, E, maybe an F chord, if you've got a half dozen chords under your fingers, see if you can find a bluegrass um, festival near you once it gets warm, or if you live in a warm place and get to go to festivals all year round, pick outside, or a local jam. Um, and really, you know, getting out there and playing with other people um, allows you to spend hours just playing chords if you want um, and makes it a lot more fun than sitting in your own house. I know at least from my own experience of like working on some chord stuff in my house is not nearly as fun as actually having someone else to play along with. Or if you don't have someone else to play with, learning a song and singing. Um, it's great practice for your voice. You can't get worse at singing if you just try. It might be hard at first. It was really hard for me to start um, kind of learn to sing um, not, it's not easy to start kind of hearing your voice, um, singing, but it's, uh, you know, you can't get worse if you try, so highly recommended. And then you've got something to sing along with, or to play along with. Um, Pelican asks, how would you take a break on Rabbit and Log? I'd start, as always, I kind of sound like a broken record, but start with the melody. That's pretty much the mel. I don't even know what key I'm in. That was, I guess, the key of D. And then add in some double stops.
Some little like half step. Add some right hand rhythm in. You don't even need to have the melody there. If you just have a cool right hand rhythm. Something like that. There's so many different things to kind of vary the melody that it quickly um, comes out sounding like a solo or a break rather than just the melody. Um, you could think of it in the key of D. If you're thinking rabbit in the log in the key of D, you could say, okay, D, it's D. That's how I get in my nose. A, back to D. Get me burned, I'll stick it in his hair. That's how A and back to D. And then the chorus is a G. probably going to be and then A and D just to finish off the chorus. The solo is just going to be pretty much D and A chords. So you can think in like D scales and uh, kind of think out of the this D scale. sort of more scalar approach um those are a couple ideas anyway um dean says if you come from a guitar background you might feel the difference more between flat and radius chord that may well be mandolin was my first instrument um guitar is definitely second um but i can imagine that being the case it's probably more pronounced on a on an electric or on a six string guitar um, Jerusalem Ridge. I could probably see if I can get through that one. Oh, oh boy. Okay. Uh, the chat always jumps down on me here. Um, do I play any Italian folk tunes? I don't. Somebody just sent me a bunch of great Italian videos that I need to continue watching. Um, but I'll see if I can find something nice in there and share it with you all somehow. <clears throat> Some, uh, Karen says I love mandolin orange. Yeah, they're awesome. Um, uh, yeah, so Chad says check the mandolin, mando lessons, my website, for double stop lessons. Um, oh, check, you are checking. Yeah, so in the technique and fundamentals section at the bottom of the that technique and fundamentals page, there's a whole series on adding double stops to your playing. Um, okay, so I've got uh, Jerusalem Ridge, I've got an old Joe Clark uh, request. Uh, it's a it's a Mexican telly the Baja. I don't know. It's got the four way switch, so you can kind of get a kind of amped up neck pickup sound. There's a little muddy farm question about the telly. Um, hello from Shetland Islands. Great to have you back, Gilbert. <laughs> um, Louisiana. Great. <laughs> Uh, James says, how long before your family stages an intervention because of all those instruments? I'm expecting any day now. <laughs> yeah, me too. Uh, yeah, they uh, they roll their eyes, but very supportive. <laughs> uh, okay, I'll play some of these requests. I'll try Jerusalem Ridge. I always get the parts mixed up. It's like a five-part tune. Is. 
goes up there. on the right get in the right octave on that last part at first great tune um thanks for the request uh and the other request was um old joe clark yeah i'll play a little old joe clark after some lesson or after kind of um catching up with the chat here um and says it gets so jealous of other instruments so much harder to get clean tone and a lot less forgiving when making mistakes compared to a guitar yeah mandolin you are kind of small and you you hear all those mistakes but but they sound good the fight is worth it keep keep up the good work it's still better than the fiddle though yeah yeah i, I don't i play a lot of instruments but fiddle is not one of them um i tried to learn to play fiddle and i mostly like it doesn't really work i kind of started hurting myself i was having like elbow and shoulder and back trouble from tensing up playing the fiddle so i i kind of put that on hold for the foreseeable future um a request for bury me beneath the willow i can try to do that yeah uh jane evans says can i play tenor guitar and tenor banjo if i play mandolin yes absolutely um tenor guitar there's a couple different tunings that people use but you can tune tenor guitars gdae um, or you can tune them like a mandola. Same thing with tenor banjos. You can tune them CG, uh, GDAE or CGDA like a mandola. But you can tune them both like mandolins. Super fun. Great. Different sound with all the same fingering. Uh, well, same same note layout. You use different fingers. But um, just because it's the longer scale length. You kind of use guitar fingering rather than mandolin fingering. But yeah, go for it. It's great. Great fun. Um... Oh, almost caught up with the chat here. Good. Uh, do it. Five, three. Uh, Jamie says, if you have time, do you know a good tune to practice the F chord? Um, other than losing my religion, of course. Maybe something Irish. Um, the F chord. So, yeah. One thing that can make the F chord easier that I do is I don't play the high E string. So, I just play 5-3 open. You can put that one in there if you want on the E string. It's a good sound too. But I mostly just leave that high E string off. Makes the chord a little more condensed. Versus. It's, it's, you've already got an F in there. On the th third fret of your D string. Um, in terms of a. A, a song um good question i think do i have any tunes in the key of f let's see i don't know that i do i know a couple but i don't know if they're on the website oh oh so there's one tune that on my website in the key of f it's a waltz that i wrote you could give that a try it's called waltz for two friends um Maybe that would be helpful. It's got some F chords in it. Um, okay, and before I forget here, I want to do Old Joe Clark.
interesting time feel for that one. Uh, old old Joe Clark, not usually quite so rhythmically jazzed up a little bit. Um, but a great tune. It's on my website if you don't know it already. Not not quite like that, but the the, the skeletons there. Uh, uh, Mr. Cough Drop says, I notice you're playing lots of inversions for A and D and G and E, two-finger inversions. Could you run through a few of them in, let's say, A, so we can see what you're doing? Great observation. Yeah, I do a lot of that, especially with double stops. Um, so if I'm in the key of A, that's key of D. <laughs> um, so, yeah, a lot of two-finger stuff. Um, one of my kind of go, let's see, if I'm in the key of A, So in terms of A chord, A, A double stops, um, sixth fret on the, well, let's start all the way at the bottom. Second fret on the G string, second fret on the D. Gives you that nice kind of big drony A chord. You can add the sixth fret on the G string, second fret on the D. Nice big full A chord. Um, you can put the... 6th fret still on the G string, and 7th on the D. Gives you a nice A chord. A little more condensed. Uh, you can do 7th on D, 4th on A. Or you can do 2nd on D, 4th on A. You can do 4th on A, open E. So ultimately, like learning the three notes that a chord makes up and then finding all those in, in, inversions. So you have, for the key of A, you have A, C sharp, and E for your A chord. So you have A and E, C sharp, and E, C sharp, and A, A and C sharp, E and C sharp, A and E, C sharp, and E, C sharp, and A, uh, A and A. Uh, a, f an e, a five chord, an E chord that I use a lot. So like, uh, is I do a lot of this sixth fret on the D string and second fret on the A string. So if we're in the key of A. Uh, yeah. So the melody is the second fret. And you have that sixth fret below on the D string. A lot of that fourth and open, fourth and the A, open E. Back to that E. So we've got A, the chords are A, D, A, and we're going open A, open E. And then open D, open A, second fret on E. Second fret on D, open E, open A. So. Um, another, so, yeah, like, what you can do, uh, fourth fret on the D, open A. Six on the D, second on the A. And then the seventh on the D, fourth on the A. Get the little walk up of D, E, A, or in natural numbers, four, five, one. A lot of that sort of stuff. Um, okay, see if I can catch up with the chat again. Uh, Andrew says, what temperature do you feel comfortable taking your mandolin outside? Um, as long as it's, a, <laughs> being from Maine, as long as it's, fr like, above freezing, I don't worry about the mandolin all that much. Um, you know, I think in terms of, like, personal comfort, the way I sort of see it is your mandolin's happy if you're happy. So if you're outside and, like, really, um, like, shivering and, uncomfortable your mandolin might be a little uncomfortable i've played 
some gigs. I played a gig in a, like a three-sided open horse barn. Uh, it was, I think the temperature got to 32. I don't know if it ever like hit 32 on us, but it was we were in like winter jackets <laughs> playing. I didn't worry too much about the mandolin um, at that point. You know, I think what they what instruments don't like is really quick changes in temperature. So you know, don't go from like a sauna and then go throw your mandolin in the snow. Uh, and even then, you know, that's as a temperature thing. Well, that's more likely to affect the finish. You know, you might get some like finish crackling. You might um, open a seam or put a crack in your instrument, but um, a lot of, a lot more cracks and seams open up due to humidity, which also changes with temperature. But um, yeah, I, sort of my rule of thumb is if I'm happy, the instrument's happy. Uh, direct sun can be tricky. Um, don't leave it in the rain, anything like that. <laughs> Um, all right, NCCTRN says, uh, can you play Winterbach Elegy, a Swedish singer-songwriter that is, I don't know them, but I love Swedish music, um, I especially kind of, I, I, I know a lot of Polskas, um, but I don't know as much contemporary Swedish singer-songwriter stuff. Um, I play a little uh, Bury Me Beneath the Willow. song start I can't remember how it starts um, I'll sing that verse tomorrow was to be our wedding God oh God can she be she's gone parting with another and no longer thinks of me song if you don't know it you can find all the words somewhere <laughs> I, I i'm bad at remembering tunes and melodies and lyrics kind of on the fly but a great song all the same uh can you use scales to discover licks from the pelican absolutely so i was actually doing a little bit of that um with bury me beneath the willow so That's sort of, it's very kind of jumpy melody. Bury me beneath the willow. So you can add a little kind of run up to that first note. scalar stuff comes from kind of knowing the note it's a little bit of kind of like playing chess not that i play much chess um it's it's about knowing where you want to end your you know so if, if i think ending on the melody note is a great thing to kind of aim for so you know we have Mm 
maybe the basic outline of the melody. And then you fill that in with scales and parts of scales and arpeggios. There's a note. There's another. So it kind of got off this off the path there. But it ended. Um, where can she be? So whatever happens, as long as you come back and land on that, the note of the melody, you're kind of you're gonna be in a in a good spot. Um, let's see. Uh, Cheyenne says you can, in terms of like getting a mandolin, you feel comfortable going outside with. Yep, you can get a cheaper mandolin and not worry as much about that. Um, definitely, I think I think that's true. I also think spending i think a good instrument is a little hardier than you might think it is um you know so i don't i pretty much bring this thing everywhere um this is not a cheap instrument and but i've you know i bring it to every festival and bonfire and everything that i go to and i take good care of it um at the same time um you know i don't i don't want to be sort of playing an inferior instrument um, just because I don't, I, just because I kind of want to protect the, the, the higher priced instruments. You want to take good care of them, but ultimately playing music, um, is the most fun on the instrument that you know the best and the instrument that feels and sounds the best to you. Um, and I'm also like, I kind of scratch and ding up instruments and for the most part, except for this, this is the only instrument I've really ever bought new. Um, I buy a lot of instruments used just because they already have scratches. I don't feel as bad when I put a scratch in them. Um, they're not pristine, so I don't have that like, oh, I just put the first ding in that instrument sort of thing. They often sound better because they've been played in. Um, you know, all the if it's got cracks, it's where it's um, kind of places in the wood that were maybe weaker to begin with, so the crack is. You know, it's not pretty, but it's kind of been re-strengthened by cracking and getting glued, assuming it was repaired properly. Um, uh, Galway Girl, the Steve Earl tune. I've heard of it, but I don't know it myself. But great question. Um, cool. Good evening from Jerusalem. Awesome. Welcome. Uh, I just played Jerusalem Ridge. I think maybe unrelated but it depends on what jerusalem you are from you are joining us from uh is there a lesson for what you just showed on the inversions i don't know that i do have a i have a lesson on this is from little muddy farm is there a lesson for that you, you talk about inversions i think the lesson you might find most helpful i don't think i have something specifically on inversions but um how to play uh, what is it? I'll, I'll look it up here because I know I have something that will work. Um, <clears throat> I think it's like how to build chords. Yeah. So it's near the top of the technique and fundamentals page. It's fourth one down. How to build chords. Um, and then also two string chords um, at the, near the bottom of the list is another good one um there i do a couple different keys of two string chords and talk a little bit about inversions in there um nccTRN says we have a bluegrass session every summer in grana of smaland in sweden i play mandolin there awesome great i'm actually going to be in sweden in may sometime end of may i'm really looking forward to going um dean's headed out thank you thank you for joining us um <laughs> oh i think maybe graham i was just trying to decode maybe graham your quote got mixed up but hello from England, I like to noodle around the fretboard in as many scales as possible. Cool. Yeah. Noodling 
is great as long as you're not interfering with like what other people are doing and kind of creating sonic like sound noise that's interfering with other people i i noodle a lot um probably even when i shouldn't um but it's it's fun and it, it does build some skills um got a mike lee says just got a rogue and love it awesome i've got a lesson actually about buying rogue mandolins that um is in the works i'll give you all a little sneak peek that i i've i've never i've always told people not to buy the you can get a 50 dollar rogue off musician's friend and i've always said like maybe stay away from those you can get them and they can work um and they can be all right they can be decent mandolins but you never quite know what you're gonna get so i I got one in the mail and sort of made a video of myself taking it out of the box and tuning it up. And I was like, okay, yeah, this thing's not so bad. And then I looked at it and the top was totally caving in. <laughs> um, and I've, I've played them that are totally fine. I'm not saying they're like terrible instruments. I think mostly it's sort of where you buy it from. Sometimes it'll be fine. Sometimes it'll be totally unplayable and broken. So that's in the mail back now. I'll maybe try to get another one. Um... But yeah, it's uh, they can be you know for the money like a, a fifty dollar man or so mandolin is hard to hard to argue with if it if it comes to you in working condition. Um, can I play Daybreak in Dixie? Uh, uh not really. <laughs> no, I can't. But I I've got a version in my head. I think. Who does is that on bluegrass mandolin extravaganza that there's a beautiful version of that i don't know there's there's some version of daybreak and dixie probably sam bush because he's just he just rocks that kind of stuff um do i know any klezmer music not really i've i've learned a couple a couple of my friends are great klezmer musicians and i've sort of been in workshops where they've taught tunes but kind of in one ear out the other um Mike Lee says, just want to appreciate everything you do. Thank you so much. Yeah, I haven't, um, I've never, I don't have a repertoire. I've learned a tune here or there in the past and have totally forgot them. I wouldn't be able to pull them out if my life, uh, life depended on it. Um, cool. Awesome. Thank you for the hospitality, NCCTRN. Um, I'm just gonna, I've got a friend who lives near Stockholm, um, gonna go up and I've, he's lived there since pretty much we graduated high school um and i've never been over to visit him and he's come back to the back home to the states a couple times um but gonna go visit him for a little while hopefully play a little bit of music um cool hobgoblin does zero percent financing on mandolins for young folks to promote playing that's awesome do I play the violin? I do not play the violin. Um, I, I tried to learn a little bit of um, fiddle violin a, a bunch of years ago, but um, ultimately stuck with kind of fretted, plucked instruments. But it's a beautiful sound. I get to, I think part of it is I get to play with and like back up and play chords for a lot of really awesome fiddle players. So I just get to hear great fiddle music all the time. And I don't need to put the work in myself to actually learn how to make it sound good coming out of me. But um, a great instrument for sure. One of my favorites. Um, all right. Well, I think it's time that I head out. But thank you so much for all joining in. Uh, if you're just here, I do these every, every week at noon uh, on Saturdays. Noon Eastern Standard Time on Saturdays um and it's a uh, it's a, always a fun time i love interacting with you all and seeing what you've been up to and what questions you have um oh one last question here gary says how are you traveling with your mandolin to sweden um hopefully in carry-on <laughs> um it's it's a small enough case i can get it in the carry-on um never had any real trouble i also have just like a backpack that i can check if i need to um so Fingers crossed. It's always a little terrifying flying with instruments, but uh, there you have it. All right. Um, well, thank you so much, and happy picking. Get out there, play some music, and hope to see you again next week. All righty. Bye-bye.